For over a year, I've been using a phone with a thermal imaging camera in it. I started off for the first year with the Cat S61 that's got the Fleur Lepton sensor in it. And I really liked it. Uh, it's really useful if you're in the electrical and electronic and mechanical industries to have a thermal sense like that in your phone. It basically lets you, well, I'll show you, I'll show you an image, the sort of image you get out of it. It lets you look at objects and look for hot spots or see how the heat is distributed about them. But having a, enjoyed using this one, a new contender came in the scene, the Blackview BV9900 Pro. And I bought this earlier in the year and I've been using it continuously as my daily driver for four months. So I thought four months is a good time to assess it. So uh, here is a review of it. And I want to point out, I bought this myself. I bought both these phones myself. Uh, it's not a paid for shill review. You're actually going to get an honest opinion on them. So first things first. Physical size, they're pretty much the same size. They uh, both came without a case. I, Even though they're ruggedized, I prefer a case. The first thing I did was I got a case. And in the case of the Blackview, uh, that's essential if you've got working hands because it's a very slippy phone. Uh, and although it's ruggedized, you don't want to like drop it too much. So a case like this adds a little bit to the thickness, but is basically, it's, it's got two advantages. It, it protects any phone. I mean, I recommend not using a smartphone unless you've got even a thin case around it because it does two things. It avoids, it reduces the sharpness of impacts, particularly if it gets dropped in the corner. And it also means that you're not holding the metal case. And that's kind of important these days because some of the chargers that are sold online are not really compliant. You just don't know what you're plugging into. And there have been a few instances of people plugging into rogue chargers and the metal bodied phone uh, shell comes live and then their hand locks onto it. All very grim. So uh, a, a condom case, they call them, is uh, essential for all smartphones these days. So let's uh, look at the specifications. Uh, they're both dual SIM. The, I think this one offers... Uh, it. Uh, I think they both actually do the thing where you can either put two SIMs in or you can put one SIM on one SD card. And that used to annoy me in the past because, uh, the you know, I wanted the extra memory for video recording and stuff like that. However, um, the Blackview has 128 gigabyte of memory and 8 gig RAM. So that kind of means that that's not so crucial anymore because... Uh, I can record quite a lot of video on this, even at 4K, and it still has plenty of memory space left, so it's not such an issue. Both the SIMs in the Blackview, since the, this, this video is about Blackview, let's talk about the Blackview. Uh, both SIMs can be used with 4G, and apparently the only network that you may have to check up on is America Verizon. I don't know if it works the Verizon network. Check online if you're thinking of getting one. The Blackview has a 4,380 milliamp hour battery, and that will last me one or two days, depending on the amount of usage. I, I use my phone quite a lot. I use it as my media device, particularly when I go to bed at night when I'm supposed to be sleeping and I'm watching videos. And uh, when you want to charge it, you've got the option, as with the cat, of uh, plugging in the USB-C connector in the bottom. Different to the cat is the fact that this one does not have a headphone port but it does come with a set of headphones that i've not used as you can see with a usb-c connector on them and it's also interesting to note it's a fairly standard usb-c connector well, i should hope it is it's a standard uh, i plugged in this little microphone and it worked a treat it worked fine in open camera oh there's a thing open camera open camera works fine with the cameras in this unit uh, the only thing it struggles with, it, it can see the Fleur camera is there, but it gets a bit upset when it uh, it tries to access a camera that it doesn't quite understand. The unit came with a charger. It's an 18 watt charger. It's the multi-voltage one. It puts out 5, 7, 9 and 12 volts at between uh, 1.5 amps to 2 amps, depending on uh, the charge uh, communication. And uh, that means it can charge this very quickly. But you also have the option. I'm just going to put this little flap in. Now, when I put this flap in, it clicks in reassuringly. The one on the... Uh, I'll just keep these awake. 
the one in the cat is much easier to open and it just doesn't feel quite so secure when it closes. I think I prefer the clicking one in that one. Um, it also has, and this is a, a difference from the cat again, you can also charge it inductively. It has the inductive charging built in, the key, QI, and it also has NFC, so you can actually use this with things like Google Pay. The processor in this one, I'm not sure what the processor is in the cat. It's not super fast. It was almost disappointingly slow in a way at times. But the one in the, the black view is a Helio P90 by MediaTek. It's an octa-core and it's currently running Android 9. I'm guessing they might upgrade that later to Android 10, but to be honest, I prefer to stick with what's been well tried and tested, which in this case is Android 9. The camera's in the back and the front. Well, the, let's start with the front camera. It's a 16 mega, mega, megapixel. It's a 16 megapixel camera. It's pretty good quality. I'm just going to actually turn this off while I'm fumbling and turning it over. Uh, there is a fingerprint sensor on the side here. Um, I don't tend to use fingerprint sensor because generally speaking, when I'm out working, I end up with a different shape fingerprint every day just with wear and tear of work. But it does have the fingerprint sensor for those who like fingerprint sensors. It also, just like the cat, it has the push to talk button on the side. This is nice. Um, I was playing with that last year with the, uh, is it Zello? The walkie talkie app. And it was quite fun to use. Um, the camera's in the back. We've got the Sony 48 megapixel IMX582 sensor. I shall talk about that in more detail. It can shoot 4K at 30 frames per second, which is a limitation over some of the other ones that uh, can shoot much higher frame rates. But having said that, 4K at 30 frames per second is fine. But the thing is, Sony, these Sony 48 megapixel cameras are used in a wide range of phones. And one thing they never seem to brag about too much in the adverts for these phones is that it uses what's called a pixel binning system that uh, for to make the pixels more sensitive. So it does have 48 megapixels. But say, for instance, a red pixel will be a little square divided into four like a window, but all four of those pixels are red. And the net result of that is it uses those to... Uh, increase the sensitivity and apply a bit of pre-filtering for the sensor. It just improves the sensor. But it means it's a 12 megapixel camera. So just keep that in mind. You're not going to get like a 48 megapixel shot. It is 48 megapixel sensor, but like all the other phones, quite high profile phones that use the same Sony 48 megapixel sensor, it is recording at 12 megapixels. And that gives a maximum resolution in open camera of 4000 by 3000, which is 12 megapixels. And ironically, the 16 megapixel selfie camera can record, at, uh, it can take pictures of 4,608 by 3456 pixels, uh, which is just under 16 megapixel, 15.93 megapixel, he said, referring to notes just off camera, because I'd never remember that. Other things worthy of note. The camera is optimized for light gathering. It's actually, it, it can see better in the dark than I can. I wouldn't say it's a, a super night vision-y type camera. That's, that's what the thermal one's for. But uh, it's also got quite a wide lens there. It's got a wide aperture. And that means it's uh, using at close range. I'm actually using a Moto G7 at the moment to record this. And the Moto G7 is this great thing that, you know, you can focus down to about here and then everything from about here down to there, down to the bench, is in focus. It just locks everything. and It's not going to be hunting for focus all the time. If I was uh, using this to record, I'd have to enable the, sort of the, the sweeping focus because it does focus in a very narrow range. If I locked it into here, it would just be a sort of area like that. That's just for this. That's unusual. This is just because I film with a, the camera at a very close range to the bench and prefer to lock the focus off. It's not a bad thing. It's like it's common to most of these sort of higher end cameras with the higher resolution images. The other two cameras here, are the little gold colour rim, this sort of orangey rim round here. That is a 5 megapixel fixed focus one, and it works in conjunction with the Fleur Lepton sensor. The Fleur Lepton sensor, incidentally, that's the thermal imaging camera, which is just fantastic. Uh, it's a 
80 by 60 resolution, you think, well, that doesn't sound like a very high resolution. But in reality, I'll just enable that right now and show you. In reality, my first thermal imaging camera, an E4 by Fleur, which cost a grand, was 80 by 60. You can see it's a... Uh, if I just place my hand on the table, in fact, and then uh, point this at it, you'll see the handprint there left behind. It's uh, got lots of novel uses, this, but the main use I've got for it is technical uses. The resolution of 80 by 60 isn't a big issue. You saw there that the detail is still fine. You don't need that higher resolution with uh, thermal imaging. I think CAT are bringing out another phone that has a higher resolution. But that'll be interesting to see. I've not seen one of those yet. This one, though, it turned out that the E4 by Fleur uh, was actually hobbled in software. They had a very standardised module inside. And with a little software tweak, it suddenly became 320 by 240, which is an absolute delight. But that's not going to fit into a smartphone. Uh, the other cameras... So, Open Camera can actually use this camera on its own. It's a fixed focus one. And then other one is a little 2 megapixel fixed focus, and it's the macro one. It's really good for getting up close and actually doing the focusing manually by actually moving the camera backwards and forwards in places that otherwise focus would be quite difficult. You can get it locked onto tiny little things at very close range. It's very good. The... <clears throat> Phones tend to have gimmicks. Now, in the case of the Cat S61, it's gimmicks where a volatile organic compound sensor here, which could measure humidity, temperature, and uh, certain gases, like solvents and things like that. And it had the facility to give an alarm if uh, you were in an area with quite a high solvent level in the air, which is handy for your working. It's not a bad idea. They also had the laser measuring. You think, wow, laser measuring. That must be just like this. This uh, time of flight laser measurer that you basically, you've got an object you want to measure to, you push the button, the little laser here appears, and then you push the button and it measures the distance to it by measuring how long it took for the laser beam to bounce out and back again. And I was thinking that's what was in here, but sadly, as I have to say, having spent quite a lot of money for this, I was miffed to find that what it actually does is just fires a laser out, and it uses a piece of software that takes a picture of where the laser hits, and then basically, it, if it's, you can assist it, you can align it up the little cross here yourself, and then it counts the pixels in the camera. It kind of works. You calibrate it, it gives a rough measurement, but it's not quite the same thing. That said, maybe they, maybe it's just quite hard to fit that into one of these. But I'd love that feature in a modern rugged phone. That would just be the icing on the cake. Uh, the battery, I've mentioned the battery. It's, it's got a good life. The screen size is 5.7 inch, I think, in this. It's quite a big screen. I would say the cat has the edge and intensity, but it's not that bad. It's fine. It's, it's amply bright enough to see. Volume-wise, both have the same volume. Um, what else is there worth saying about this? Oh, this one's gimmicks. This one has a barometer built in, which is quite interesting. I've, I've been using it with an app. Hold on, I'll just unlock this. It comes with a... Both of them come with a tool bag thing. This is trying to be the Fleur. The, the Cat S61, it's actually done a better job being a Cat S61. But uh, they come with the little, tool, what they call the tool bag or whatever. And it's just a series of apps. You might as well just download your own because, you know, they're just basic apps. One of those is the barometer, which gives an altitude of 137 metres at the moment, which is not correct. But that, the altitude, it just seems to reference that to air pressure. If I go to another barometer app, a more professional barometer app, it uh, does it give an altitude? Um, oh, blank! That's plummeting. That will explain the weather. Uh, does it give a? Does it give? Hold on, I'm just going off camera briefly. Automatic. It says sixty meters, which is probably more accurate. Uh, I'm not sure about the other one. I think it's just a basic app that just, you know, well, yeah, you've got options. It is a standard barometric sensor though, and it measures humidity and temperature as well. Now, here's another thing. Both these phones. They measure humidity, which means they've probably got a membrane humidity sensor. But they're both rated to be used under salty water. 
that's not going to do that sensor much good, or if it leaves residue of salt. If you were using the humidity sensor in them, which is kind of semi-pointless when it's a phone in your pocket, then um, it might make sense to just give it a rinse out after you've been near salty water with it. I've not tried these underwater. I, I occasionally washed this phone in the past when uh, it was getting dirty at work, but making sure that all the caps are closed first. Uh, but you can, you don't have to worry about it. It is theoretically waterproof to quite a depth and also impact resistant. But I, because I, I bought this myself and I use it, I'm not going to smash it off concrete. Much as you want me to smash it off concrete. The other gimmick this one's got is a heart uh, rate monitor here. Um, I'll show you the heart rate monitor. It is in the toolbox again. Oh, well, let's see what my heart rate is. This should be interesting. So with the heart rate, it's a bit awkward. It's almost like it should have been mounted here so you can put your finger comfortably across it, but it's actually right in the bottom down here. So I'll go to heart rate. I'll start it. Let's see what my heart rate is. So you put your finger over the sensor and you relax. And you keep it rock steady so that it can get a decent... Assuming I've got my finger directly over the sensor. Maybe I've not. Uh, 75, is it? Oh, it's, it's advanced. I'm getting all flustered now. I'm getting agitated. Relax. Relax and chill out. No, that's not helping. But anyway, the heart rate sensor is uh, mounted in the bottom and I'll show you it. Oh, it's going back down again. I'll press start and show you how it detects. See the pulsing green light? It uses that to detect. It's actually sh showing up quite slow in here. It's pulsing at really high speed here. Um, it's actually looking for modulation of the light absorbency due to the blood flowing in your finger. And you can't really see that, but the green light can effectively. It, it would uh, vary that. Much like the blood oximeter type things work. Sadly, this one can't tell the, the oxygen level in your blood. Um, things that do work, SkyMap. I quite like SkyMap. That lets you look around and see the, all the star constellations, things like that. That works really well in this. It's, it seemed, In fact, the GPS positioning, I'm not going to show you that because it will literally put an X right above the ceiling where this workbench is. It's very accurate and fast. Um, filming the camera, video. It can film up to 4K. I think the Cat S61 could also film up to 4K, but there was an issue. I use, uh, I don't use the stock camera apps to record. I tend to use open camera or other apps. And with the Cat S61, they all, including YouTube's own app, they had problems that if you recorded video, it would drop big chunks of frames. The video would just pause and then continue. And uh, it did that all the time. Every time it did an update, I was like, oh, yes, have they fixed it? Have they fixed it? And they never, ever fixed that. The Black View worked perfectly out of the box. It works fine with all the other uh, camera apps. Uh, it gives, seems to give full control over the camera. So um, in summary, what do I think of the Black View BV9900 Pro? Noting, I think I mentioned this at the beginning, but I'll mention it again. Uh, there's two models. Uh, BV9900 and BV9900 Pro. The uh, standard one will come with an ordinary camera here. The Pro comes with thermal imaging camera. I recommend getting the thermal imaging camera. It's just, it's the bee's knees. It's the whole reason for getting one of these, uh, these phones. So let's pop this back in here and show you some pictures that I took to compare and show you that these, the sensors used in these are the same. But they process them very slightly differently. Let me just uh, fumble through my pictures here. I had to mark these pictures. The, the app's the same because it's the Fleur Lepton sensor and uh, it's the uh, Fleur, Fleur's own app. So I had to mark them. Uh, C for the cat and BV for the black view because I honestly couldn't really tell them apart. Uh, the one thing I did find out is that the... Use the other camera to provide edge detection. It shows a, a more a sharper image to put the thermal uh, reading into perspective. And I did notice that the black views actually showed that much more vivid when you're actually looking at the screen. But when you take the picture, 
it mutes it down a bit. So the dominance is given to the thermal image. And you can actually see here, that's a dehumidifier. Um, I took these at different times, so there's a slight difference in temperature. But you'll see that uh, you can actually see the hot spots in this where the heat path is through it. In the case of the back of this, this is the condenser path where the heat's coming down. The hot air, moisture-loaded lo loaded air, is coming down, circulates, and then going back up again. Uh, you can see that accurately in both of them. Uh, next picture is, uh, let's take a look at a chandelier. So there's the cat again. And there's the BV, the black view. Again, the BV showed, a, the black view showed a sort of much more detailed image of the sort of like the ceiling uh, rows above the sort of, I would call it chandelier, candelabra might have a better description. But once the picture was taken, it muted that down a bit. And you can see, I think a cat have softened the thermal imaging a bit more than the cat here, cat uh, black view, should I say, because uh, there is a more slightly sort of blobbiness of the actual, the thermal imaging. But the images both convey exactly the same useful information. So, final image. I resist from my workbench. I'd held the clips to put it on. You can see where I actually held the clips. Because they're, they're, that's why they're warm. Cat. Black view. Uh, again, the only real difference I'm seeing here is you can see this sort of block, blockiness of the thermal image. Although it is the same sensor, it's applied slightly less filtering to that. Um, but the end result is that they both are completely usable in exactly the same way. It's very, it's quite nice that you switched from the cat to the black view and it was the same app um, and the same sensor. It was quite nice. So um, I have to say, having used this for four months, I'm very happy with it. This represents probably the most affordable, rugged thermal imaging smartphone on the market at the moment. But I get the feeling that both the Cat and Blackview and Ulufone, who have also released one, they're setting a new trend that, um, of adding these thermal imaging cameras. It's only going to be a matter of time before some of the big players like Samsung uh, actually include these too. Because uh, once you've had one in your phone, you'll find uses for it. Because um, certainly in engineering, it's perfect for, you know, a circuit board. If, it's, if there's a rogue component on it, you can connect a current limited supply and that road component will literally just announce itself as a bright dot in the image by heating up if it's gone short circuit. It's quite useful for diagnosing some faults. But there we go. The Blackview BV9900 Pro. It gets the BigClive.com seal of approval. It's a, it's a very good phone. I like it.